Hello everyone, welcome back to another Kerbal Space Program 2 video. That's right, it's been a hot minute since I made some KSP2 content on this channel, but I simply did not have time to make a Kerbal Space Program 1 video this week. Ironically, Kerbal Space Program 1 videos, they tend to take a little bit longer to make than Kerbal Space Program 2 videos because now I'm using, uh, you know, mods that I, I don't know how to use, so I have to research the mod, install it, mess up the install seven times and then get it working and then figure out what all the parts are and what they do and then come up with a mission around those parts and generally because KSP1 is a more functional game than Kerbal Space Program 2 there's kind of a not pressure but maybe an expectation the uh, the difficulty level and I don't know overall complexity of the mission should be fairly high and you know engaging for the audience whereas Kerbal Space Program 2 a bit bit more simple you know people are a bit more forgiving of the uh the more simplistic missions maybe because we, there's a fundamental understanding that the game is um a little bit rough around the edges shall we say so um yes and i so to let's rewind i said that i didn't have that i didn't have that much time to make a kerbal space program video this week because this week i i'm not actually making a video this week for you guys i'm planning on publishing this video where's my calendar so this will be the 21st of october which for me is the day before space creator day 2023 so this week i have been in germany so i haven't i'm making this video kind of the week prior and i can upload it but i also had to make another kerbal video this week as well that was my rfa1 video and so that kind of took up a lot of the time obviously i have a real job as well so i didn't have that much time left to make a video for this saturday so i thought let's Break out Kerbal Space Program do <laughs> Kerbal Space Program 2, slap a nice little fun old mission together and um you know, keep keep the content coming because uh, space this week. I don't know what I'm gonna do, but I don't think I can really feasibly do anything to do with space this week uh, for Mondays. And I don't want my channel to go like um, you know, over a week without any upload whatsoever. So all of the ex I feel like this whole episode so far has been you know hand waving and excuses. I haven't talked about what is um, was in the title and thumbnail of the video, uh, but that is of course I'm doing Hoppy. Hoppy, my favorite, everyone's favorite starship. You know, SN8, maybe, SN15, I get it. No, Hoppy is the best. I wanted to let Hoppy do a mission to the moon. That's what we're going to do. Hoppy has hopped on Earth, but it would be nice if Hoppy could hop on the moon. Really, really paving the way for a starship moonship. So I've built my Hoppy. Now we've got to build the launcher that's going to get it to the moon. I felt that the SLS would be the most appropriate launch vehicle for um for hoppy you know either this means that both sls fans and starship fans are happy or i've just uh, enraged the two groups or you know it is okay to like more than one rocket <laughs> anyway the rocket is uh, now launching For all its flaws, I do miss the uh, the launch sound effects and the visual effects of the engine plumes uh, when I go back to KSP-1. So we can all uh, appreciate that. Now we can just uh, spin this thing around like space shuttle style and uh, proceed our way to orbit. This is actually the second time I attempted to launch this because uh, first time I didn't have enough struts and it wobbled about a bit. And did you see that little pan down just there? That's right. I didn't want to send Hoppy on its own. So I decided to send a pilot, but of course, Hoppy does not have any crew cabins built into it or anything like that. So I had to just strap a seat to the outside. And only one pilot is crazy enough, or mentally deficient enough at least, uh, to take on such a role. And that is, of course, your boy, Jebediah Kerman. There he is, sitting on top of the, uh, uh, the booster as we detach those four solid rocket motors and our thrust weight ratio drops off quite substantially because... Uh, Yes, I've only got those four vector engines, and this SLS stage is, I, th I feel like it's bigger than the real life SLS core stage, like it's taller, and the thrust rate ratio is not very good. So it's going to take us a little while to get to orbit, but worry not, we do have enough delta V to get this thing into orbit, and indeed get Hoppy not only to the surface of the Mun, but also to perform a hop on the surface of the Mun. So we can truly make sure that when we send the SpaceX moon lander, 
we know that the Raptor engine can land it, even though it's probably going to land on those upper mounted engines to avoid the regolith getting smashed up in the... You know, it doesn't really matter, guys. The thing is, is that this is not actually a very realistic mission. I'm just going to make that very clear. So you can't nitpick any flaws in the logic because there was no logic to begin with, you know. But despite it being, at its core, utterly ridiculous, I hope in that sense it's an entertaining watch and is worthy of a little like on the video and of course a subscribe so that you get these videos in your, sub sub your subscription boxes. I apologise, I say these things, I know it kind of annoys people say like, hey I know how YouTube works, you don't need to tell me, but like, we've like looked at the analytics and whenever I say hey can you give a like and subscribe, it actually makes a, quite a substantial difference. I need, I've just got to put food on the table guys, I'm just, you know, doing my part. So that's me explaining why I say that, those things. <laughs> anyway, as you can see, the SLS has been expended. We are now on our nice reusable SpaceX stage. Uh, I say reusable because of course we're not just going to the Mun. You might have noticed we've got parachutes here. I intend to take this thing not just back to Kerbin, but back to the Kerbal Space Centre. So that's going to be a, a bit of a challenging thing to do. When you think about it, I said I wanted to do this mission because it was easy and quick, and then I kept on adding more and more challenges. Uh, the only reason I added parachutes to this thing, I, I wanted to land this thing on the, uh, the the single Raptor 1 engine. It's the Vector, but that's the Raptor 1 standard, alright? Uh, but, because it's so, like, bottom heavy, and it's, it's basically shaped like a lawn dart, right? So upon re-entry, it's just going to flip around and it will just nosedive and we can't do a flip with the engine. So the parachutes are more there just so that when it's kind of getting close to the ground, it is definitely, you know, in the words of the great Tim Dodd, flamey end down. So that's what they're for. Uh, it, this thing totally can, it has sufficient thrust weight ratio to land under its own engine power. And it will be landing with, enough, like, it's got enough delta V such that if... The aerodynamics weren't awful it could land itself on Kerbin without the need for parachutes to slow it down i think i'm pretty sure just doing the mental arithmetic it would work but you know may maybe it, it wouldn't i don't really know i should what i totally should have done i've just thought of this now whilst the whole thing has been done i've edited it i'm just doing the commentary but what i should have done you know an hour and a half ago that was how quick i had to like film this thing i done i should have added air brakes to it so i could sort of land it down sort of falcon 9 slash super heavy style but you know you live and learn and that would have at the end of the day that would have compromised the uh the aesthetics i it's not a particularly accurate a uh, hoppy, you know, look. I've got the two little monopropellant tanks at the top that stand in for those tanks that are on the real hoppy, and I feel like the landing legs I got pretty good, and it's silver, and that's about it. I didn't really add much of the greebling. I saw some, I basically, I posted a picture on uh, X, forever Twitter in our hearts, showing the launch stack and all that, and someone replied, uh, this, I'm gonna shout you out as the space peacock uh, replied with i presume their version of uh, hoppy and it's much more accurate in terms of like the greebling and stuff so um yeah my mine could be improved a little bit but i feel like the air brakes would have pushed it a bit too far uh, unlike having jebediah kerman strapped to the side of it but here it is performing its moon landing. I feel like I probably should have described what Starhopper is to people that might not be familiar with the SpaceX Starship program. I feel like that's probably a minority of viewers, but I probably should say just in case. Starhopper was a prototype test vehicle developed by SpaceX as part of the Starship program. It wasn't designed to be a full-fledged spacecraft for missions like what I'm using it for here, but rather a small-scale prototype used to test various technologies and concepts that would later be incorporated into the development of the larger Starship spacecraft. It was basically a testbed to validate the design, engines and other systems that we used in the Starship such as landing! Like we've just done there. How was that for some good timing, eh? Now it had several important features. Right? It had the Raptor engine, uh, just just the one Raptor engine, which was a critical component for the Starship program. The engine is designed to be more powerful and efficient than previous SpaceX engines, uh, and it's just generally a very good rocket engine. Uh, this is not, not really the, the time and place to talk about the complexity and the scope of the Raptor engine. Not least because it is now time for Starhopper to perform its very first lunar hop. As you can see, Jebediah has disembarked his uh, very safe seat because I wanted to prove to the world and to investors 
at Laun X Incorporated uh, that this can in fact do the lunar hop under its own computers and under its own steam and all that, no pilot intervention required. Uh, and it's Jeb at the end of the day, so probably would be better either way anyway. Anyway, as you can see, we've done a hop, we have flown away a little bit, now we're going to perform another descent and see if we can see if we can touch down safely, thus proving the Raptor 1 can be used for flight and it's the and it's the sea level Raptor as well. How great is that? Or bad, I don't know, you pick. Anyway, yes, so we've done, I've talked about the Raptor engine, didn't I? But the Starhopper in real life, which is kind of what I'm parodying here in this absurd way, uh, is that the Starhopper conducted a series of short flight tests, often referred to as hops. These hops involved the spacecraft ascending a short distance uh, into the air and then returning to the ground. Uh, these flights were kind of used to test the vehicle's stability and control. The other thing that you might notice with my Hoppy, and indeed the real one, it's very shiny and silver because it's made of stainless steel, uh, which was a departure from the traditional use of aluminium and carbon composites in you know traditional spacecraft design. Uh, SpaceX's choice of stainless steel was made as part of an effort to make the spacecraft more durable and reusable, not to mention much more easy to manufacture in their quest for rapid iteration of prototypes. But yeah, that's pretty much Starhopper. I asked ChatGPT if it could write me a nice little summary of Starhopper, and it wrote a uh, the Starhopper served as a stepping stone in the development of the Starship, allowing SpaceX to test key technologies, refine their design, and gain valuable data on the performance of the Raptor engine. It generated significant attention and excitement among space enthusiasts and the public as it conducted its test flights, and it played a crucial role in the development of the next generation Starship spacecraft. ChatGPT there, again, writing much better scripts than I ever could, so there you are, that's, uh, that's the AI summary of this. But here we are, nearly in low Mun orbit, just got to do one small burn, uh, prograde once we reach our apoapsis in order to get ourselves circularized, and then we can start thinking about getting ourselves not just back to Kerbin, but back to the Kerbal Space Center. So uh, here we go, there goes our circularization burn, there is our circularization, now it comes to planning a maneuver node. Now I did experiment with a couple of different kind of re-entry profiles to get myself close to the Kerbal Space Center. I'm not going to show you all of them, because ultimately guys, it's a lot of trial and error. I feel like this video, it's not necessary for it to be really, really long, right? So I thought, let's just, whilst there's no re-entry heating or anything like that, let's just do a straight shot from low Mun orbit, straight re-entry into Kerbin's atmosphere, no circularization in low Kerbin orbit, which means I just had to kind of guess trajectories that would get us near the Kerbal Space Center, just kept quick saving and quick loading until I got a re-entry profile that would, uh, you know, satisfy what I needed. And here we go. Whoops! <laughs> uh, don't get too time warp happy, kids. Now I then did a quick load, and this happened. I got this weird glitch that I've never seen before. The man is jelly. They've got no spacecraft. Jebediah Kerman is an ominous grey square. It's all a bit of a disaster. And all my other quick saves were like this as well. I had to restart the game. And then I got uh, here, so I'm not really sure what happened there, but chip restarting the game did fix that. So uh, yeah, then we could just do my final sort of refinement of my re-entry that would get us near the Kerbal Space Center. So here we are, just doing a quick anti-normal burn first, so that we're actually, you know, our, we're, we're going to get there, basically. <laughs> I don't need to use that many words, do I? But yeah, this has been a fun old mission, actually. I don't know, I don't know why this idea just popped into my head. I think I was just looking at, like, the Starship news on the... Uh, the Twittosphere, X-Sphere, and I think like, maybe Starship Surfer posted like an old photo of Stop, and I was like, that would be really funny to build in Kerbal Space Program 2. And wouldn't it be funny if I landed it on the Mun? And here we are. The video is now done. It's all ancient history. As you can see, I didn't quite get to the Space Center. I kind of, I, my anti-normal burn was too big. But time was of the essence, guys. I really needed to get this done. It's now 8 o'clock in the evening for me. Past 8 o'clock in the evening for me, in fact. And tomorrow, the builders around have got no internet or power to the house. So this was, like, my last chance. But really, guys, to be honest, this is good. Because the problem is the real Starhopper is right next to the launch pad for Starship. And it got significantly damaged during the launch of Booster 7 and Ship 24. And I'm kind of worried for its future. So here, my Starhopper is nice and safe from the launch pad. We've got this big natural berm in the form of a mountain, or a big hill. I don't really know what defines a mountain in Kerbal Space Program 2, but there's a big berm here either way. It's going to protect it from all manner of mishaps at the Kerbal Space Center. So really, I think putting it here is actually better 
uh, than putting it at the Kerbal Space Center. That's the, uh, the excuse, not the excuse, that's the real reason that I really planned from the get-go. The first time I did it, guys, it was a disaster. I landed it perfectly on one of the landing pads. It was brilliant, but that's not what I wanted. I wanted to land in this very specific spot, and I do it for the names on screen. My generous Patreon supporters and my YouTube channel members help me keep the lights on around here and make all of this content possible. Uh, there's also some more videos on screen from YouTube that YouTube thinks you'll like. Hopefully there's a good picks from my channel at the end of the day, so it must be. I might see you at Space Cray today, tomorrow, you know, if you're in Germany, in Speyer. If you're not, then it's a bit late now to get tickets, but you know, maybe next year. And thank you for watching and goodbye.